Hey there guys, my name's The Reaper and in today's video I'm going to be taking the Butchers at Pirates, Vikings and Knights 2. So just for those of you who aren't aware, Taking the Butchers, it's a series of videos I do now. It's basically designed to be kind of halfway between a first impressions and a review. Predominantly, I would say, a first impression series. So for example, say you're browsing a Steam store one day and say for example, especially during a Steam sale period, you go on you think, hello there's a load of games on sale. So you're looking at a lot of games that you're kind of unfamiliar with and you might not normally be looking at but one's on kind of quite a big sale you think all right I'll take a look at this it's kind of caught my eye but I want to know a bit more before I kind of drop any money on it or do anything rash or say a friend recommends you a game says oh have you heard of this I think you'll like this maybe we can play together you think all right I'll give it a look but not dropping any money yet you think all right these are kind of the videos for you so the idea is you start watching the video I show you the gameplay itself so you actually have an idea of what's going on and what the game entails uh, kind of mechanics, the combat mechanics, or anything you might need to know to just to understand how the game works. Uh, performance issues and bugs, which a lot of the time I think major review companies kind of reviews kind of tend to gloss over. If there's a free to play model, I'll explain how that works. There isn't one for this, so don't worry about that. Bugs, performance, mechanics, any issues basically I think you might need to know by the end of the video. Hopefully, you can make an informed decision about whether or not you're going to buy that game. So, Pirates Vikings and Knights 2, it's not actually a new game, nor is it a kind of standalone. It's actually a free, which is always nice. It's a free Source Engine mod. It's actually been around for some years now. Basically, it's kind of one of these mods that was popular initially, dropped down a bit, and has been in development, very kind of slow development for some time. But it's recently, I just kind of went and browsed it to think, hey, I remember I used to play that. Kind of re found it, re-downloaded it, and actually found, it's kind of actually gone up a bit in popularity which is quite interesting so there's a few more new classes around since the last time I played but I think this is kind of a good time to get back into it because it's a really fun mod and I think it's really underrated. This is a completely free mod so just go onto the Steam store, type in Pirates Vikings and Knights 2, it's a Source Engine mod, just download it and hopefully you'll have as good fun a time as I'm having with it. Basically it's a multiplayer only, three separate teams trying to complete either kind of deathmatch or objective based levels so for example you've got three teams you've got pirates pirates tend to be more uh sort of range oriented they've got a lot of kind of black powder pistol weapons they're generally a little bit faster and they tend to use one-handed weapons vikings uh every class has a two-handed weapon which is quite nice they have kind of a variety a variety of melee weapons a lot of axes and a few different kind of throwing weapons as well knights are a bit more of a mixed bag you've got classes like the heavy knight there's three classes i should say for each of the teams so the Knights have got the Heavy Knight, who's basically entirely melee focused, has a two-handed sword and a sword and shield he can use. So each class has at least two weapons. And he's basically a big, heavy, frontline tank guy. And you've got the Archer, who's kind of the reverse of him. Got a long bow and a crossbow, and just kind of a little melee knife to just to kind of defend himself in close combat if he needs to. So you've got kind of a variety of classes, even within each of the teams. So each team has kind of a general idea. So Vikings, it's kind of axes, mainly melee stuff. Pirates, it's black powder weapons, explosives, good laugh there. And knights are kind of medieval style weapons as you might expect. So there's a lot of variety in the teams. And basically it's an online, really good fun hack and slash game. So basically what I'm going to do is now I'm going to have a brief cut. And I'm going to cut a bit of gameplay footage just so I can show you what it's all about. Okay guys, so this is our game. So I'm currently playing on the Pirates team. I'm playing as the captain because he's probably my favourite class. I've got a parrot and everything. Uh, so basically the combat system, it's quite a nice little thing. So basically your direction of attack is determined by the way you're moving. So if I'm moving to the right and I attack, I'm going to swing to the right. If I'm moving left and I swing, I'm going to swing to the left. Moving backwards, you're going to stab. And moving forward, you're going to do an overhead. So but you see that little red bar, that's your charge bar that charges up as you're doing an attack. So what happens basically is the more that's charged, the more damage you're going to do. If you hold that down, it's going to build up a bit. And if it hits maximum charge, you're going to do the highest amount of damage. And you've got a chance to break through your opponent's parry as well. So the parry system brings me onto that nicely. So basically what happens is, if you right click, you can parry an attack. The direction of the parry, to get a perfect parry, which is what you're aiming for, you have to match the direction of your enemy's swing. So if your enemy's building up an attack, if they're the nearest enemy, if you right click, you're going to match their swing direction. If they then hit you while you're parrying in the same direction, you're going to get a perfect parry. It's going to stun them, and you get to counter attack quickly. So the idea is, if your opponent is going to swing at you in one direction, quickly you want to parry, just before they swing, it's going to parry in the direction they're swinging, and you hit exactly the right time, you're going to stun them briefly, and then you're going to be able to get a quick counter attack in. 
So if your opponent looks like he's going to try and power you too much, if you get the fully charged attack off, hit him with that, it's going to break through his guard a bit. Still going to mitigate some of the damage, but that's kind of the way if your opponent's just blocking, get some damage through and go for that. So maybe we can demonstrate that now. I'm not sure this is pre-recorded footage. I did try uh, doing the sound at the same time as watching the footage. Unfortunately, didn't really work out just due to the nature of uh, how fast-paced the game is. Also got a bit of keyboard sound in kind of the footage as well, kind of marred the audio, but there we are. So if you look in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see my health and my armor. You can also see that yellow circle that's filled up around my portrait. That's me as the pirate captain. If you look at that there, you can see that's full. It starts empty as you do damage. You're gonna build it up. If you fill it as I've done, you get to do your class's special attack. I can demonstrate that for you in a moment. So in my case as the pirate captain, my special attack is I can load my blunderbuss up with a big explosive cannonball, fire that, blow a load of people up. As you can see this sort of uh, this manatomter, you see the marker that the green marker there will turn to red as he's swinging at me. So while the marker's green, his charge is low enough that if I parry and he swings at me at that point, I'm going to get a perfect parry. If it goes red, it means he's fully charged, and if I try and parry, he's going to break through my guard. So you can probably demonstrate that for you now here. So swing it along, parry at the last second, get the perfect parry, get the counter attack. Again, fully charged attack, I think I broke through his guard there. So the idea is, you see the green marker as your opponent swings at you. It will show you which direction they're attacking, and if the marker's green, if you hit the parry at that point, if they attack you, you're going to perfect parry them. If the marker goes red, it means they're fully charged and you don't want to try and parry at that point unless you have no other choice. And again, if your opponent's trying to parry quite a lot, get a fully charged attack, you're going to break through their guard. So it's all about measuring up when your opponent's attacking, when your opponent's trying to get through your guard. If they hold their attack for too long, eventually it's going to drop back down. They're going to go green again. So it'll go from green, fully charged when it's red, and then back down to green again if they hold it for too long. So if you try and let them hold it for too long, you can back off. Bring your parry up. If they then try and swing, you get a perfect parry. Then. So the game that we're currently playing now, I think uh, you may have been noticing at the top of the screen there, you've got the three different symbols for the teams. So we've got the pirates on the left, the vikings and the knights. So you can see on the knights there it says six out of six. That's their chest count. Also our parrot craps on people when you kill them, which is always lovely. So basically that means they currently start with six out of six chests and on this map it's called booty the game mode the knights start with the most chests the idea of this is you go into their base it's not a team deathmatch game there are a few different uh, game modes this is probably the most popular and you see as our colleagues done there you grab one of their chests so their count down went down to five bring it back to your base and that's going to get a point for your team so the more chests you hold the faster that number is going to tick down so the knights are currently winning the vikings and the pirates haven't got any at the moment because they haven't got any chests so their numbers are staying at 240. So the more chests you've got, the quicker that number's going to... Ow, got hit by a special attack. You see, excuse me, before I was really interrupted. The more attack, uh, the more chests you've got, the quicker that number's going to go down. The first team to hit zero wins the game. Before she got hit by a tower. So the beauty of it is, due to the three-team system, you've got the Pirates, Vikings, and the Knights. Unfortunately, the Knights seem to be outclassing both of us here at the moment. But the idea is, because there's three teams, if one team is kind of dominating or inherently kind of doing better than the other two teams, both teams generally tend to converge upon that team then because they're going to win if no one intervenes. So what tends to happen is, if one team is kind of kicking everyone's ass, they're suddenly facing twice as many enemies. To say in this case, both the Vikings and the Pirates have converged on the Knights base, and they're both going to they're trying to repel twice as many attackers essentially. So. Again, if we, we've taken two chests, if our numbers go up and we start winning, you can see the flashing number of the knights means they're going to win unless someone intervenes. See if I can get a good parry here. Managed to get the parry while it was green. So because he's swinging a lot here and he's bringing his shield up. If he's bringing his shield up, I want to try and go for the big attack. If he's just doing his regular swings and not charging up, he's gone green, I can just parry him. Backed off. I think he's lagging out over there, actually. They're tough, these heavy knights. So you can see the swing, it goes from green. Fortunately, failed to parry there because I'm an idiot. Green to red and back to green again. The only exception is uh, bigger two handed weapons. If someone attacks you with a big two handed weapon, you cannot get a perfect parry with a one hander. So, for example, that big heavy knight sword, if he hits me with that, I can't perfect parry. I can still do a regular parry and I can mitigate a lot of the damage. However, I cannot perfect parry and counter a two handed weapon. And my parry got a kill again. Crapped on the enemy, call it back, always good fun. 
I think I've loaded my uh, heavy shot in, so I've got my explosive cannonball as my special, because my special meter you can see in the bottom left is full. Her. So basically the combat system is all about managing, if your opponent's swinging with a lot of light attacks, you can counter. If they go with heavy attacks, you've got to back off, wait for their charge to go down, or try and get a bunch of attacks in before they can fully charge it. Or just kind of, it's all about matching what your opponent's trying to do. The nice thing is, if you want to try and be an expert at the combat, if you want to try and play very carefully and very sort of methodically with the combat, you can do that. But the game is kind of silly enough, and there's enough range of weapons and silliness involved that if you're not particularly good at swinging around, the teams are big enough, and there's kind of a bigger variety of skill normally on each of the maps with how many teams you've got and how many players you've got, that if you want to play like a loon, just swing around like an idiot, or just run around shooting everyone, throw explosive barrels everywhere, you are free to do so. If you're not that skilled a player, you can still have fun with the combat. You can still dick about. That's kind of the advantage of the game. It's kind of a rare combination of a cleverly designed combat parry system that can mean you can do very well if you're good at combat. However, if you're not particularly good at combat, you're not very good at timing, say, big attacks or counters or parries or whatever, you can still have fun just throwing power to people, explosives, ranged weapons, or just generally dicking about. And also bear in mind, on this game mode, it's an objective game mode. I think most of the game modes are. There are a couple of team deathmatch and stuff like that. But if you're not very good at fighting, you can always just grab the chests, play around with those. So it's kind of a very light-hearted nature towards the game as well. It's just, if you're not amazing at combat, that guy was so bad he just died. <laughs> it's got a laugh. Again, the skirmisher here just lights his explosive keg. He's kind of vulnerable while he's doing it, but then he can just throw his keg out in a big group, and you can see in the top right, Blew a couple of knights up who weren't paying attention. So even if you're not brilliant at combat, you haven't got the best timing, etc. You can still have a good laugh playing stuff. He's trying to carry off our chest, I'll let the parrot do all the work. The other thing you can do with specials as well, if your special meter's full, if you're carrying a chest, you can press your special button and you can do a big sprint as well, which helps get uh, gold back to your team, which is quite nice. Let's right, get another chest here. Yeah, team seems to be doing fairly well. See if I can get a parry off again here. As I say, this is pre recorded footage. Special meter's full. I'm going to probably just shoot him. Still survived. Let the parrot finish him off, hopefully. I'm going to punch him to death. Oh, yeah, this is the bit I tried to punch him. That was funny. And we've got the pipe skill, always good fun. And you can see here, just demonstrate for the video. Press F, you got a nice boost of speed, and you can, obviously in this case, I'm already by the uh, capture points, it doesn't really matter here, but just gives you an idea of what that looks like. Uh, the Vikings, haven't seen much of them, so this is one of the Huskars. So we can get power here again. He's got a shield up, which makes it a little bit easier for him to block. He can also blo uh, block range attacks for that. However, you can still get around him or do uh, bigger heavy attacks, which can break through. And you can, uh, as you can see here, shield bash me there, which gives you, again, another opportunity to do kind of a heavy attack on someone. Do a, a counter attack on someone, excuse me. Also rolling around, and you can kick as well. So as I say, this game's completely free, so I think even if... You end up not liking it or not being that fast, you've got nothing to lose anyway. I just think the developers have been working for literally years on this. I think it's a good opportunity. <laughs> Another parrot kill. It's a really good fun game. It's one of those games that I don't think ever really got the attention it deserved. I think it's a really good fun, really good laugh. They've kind of kept with it. It hasn't developed a lot, hasn't changed a whole lot, but it's still good fun. They still work at it. It's been free forever. So I'd say just give it a try and then maybe we can help get a bit of publicity for the game as well. Now he's got the perfect parry again, you saw there. He's got a one handed weapon, so I can parry. When the marker goes green, it's not fully charged. Bring up the parry. I think we just shoot him here, we get bored of trying to kill him. Uh, attack him, cheeky bugger. So I backed off, just let his attack go down. So the parrot's really useful for taking out annoying archers because they generally have to switch to their melee weapons to properly kill it. Fortunately, I got a shot in the chest there. I've got the source ragdoll physics, so you get a lot of funny bodies flying around with the explosives. 
as you can see at the top left, our numbers tick down to just 80 now. We managed to capture five chests. So what's probably going to happen now, which is kind of the beautiful nature of the game, is both teams are generally, if they're competent at least, are generally going to converge on us. So that's the nature of the game. It's always... It's very difficult for one team to just dominate everything due to the nature of the fact it's got three teams. The only t the only time that's going to happen is if one team on its own can outclass the other two, presuming the other two are actually attacking them, which is a pretty rare occurrence. So you can generally find, even if you're not, they're a bit more skilled, you're generally going to have more people attacking that team if they're doing well. So it's kind of the beauty of the three-team system that's involved. Took down the annoying amount of times. So I think the last, two, last few minutes of the video here, so the Knights are converging on us. I think the Vikings finally start showing themselves. I think they lost track of the fact it's an objective game. I think they've managed to nick a chest and they're running off with it. So again, you can see with a two-handed weapon, that mark is always going to be red when he's swinging because it's a two-handed weapon. I can still parry, I can still mitigate most of the damage. However, if he does a fully charged attack, I'm still going to get stunned. And I'm not going to as mitigate as much damage. And I can never get a perfect parry. I'm going to take it out by that Berserker. Nice little lunge there. You can see that's the uh, Skirmisher special attack. Does a big lunge. It's quite good fun. So yeah, I think you might have seen it earlier in the video. The Man at Arms. He's quite a comic character. That's the little guy. And I've kind of been, uh, his special attack is to do a big green fart, which uh, damages everyone, and they take more damage if you hit them. So it's kind of comic relief, good fun, not take it seriously. So that's the end of uh, this level. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I'm going to end it at that. I would just say it's a free game. Just go on Steam, Pirates, Vikings and Knights 2. It's really good fun. And even if you don't enjoy it, you've got nothing to lose anyway. So thankfully, thankfully, I don't know if that's the right word, but there we are. But thank you very much for watching the video. I think that's what I was going for anyway. If you like the video, please leave a like or subscribe. It really helps out the channel. If you've got any more questions about the game, please let me know. But as I say, please do give it a bash. I think it will help the developers out. Maybe we can get a few more people playing the game. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like or subscribe. It's quite a small channel. It does help me out quite a lot. Any other questions, let me know. There's a few more Taking the Butchers videos in the video description. Or just go onto my channel. I've got reviews of quite a few different games now. Kind of a progressive series of these I do. Any more questions, leave them below in the comments. I should be able to answer them. Other than that, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.